Hello, Forge fans. Wow. What a match. Final whistle goes in Calgary. And it's Forge FC Calvary playing to a one-all draw. Forge getting the equalizer in stoppage time. Their hearts were broken last match at home against York in stoppage time. This time, they get some life. A huge, huge draw. Now, it's not often we look back at a Forge match and say a draw was huge. But in this case, it absolutely was. And uh, we'll delve a little deeper into why um, this was huge. Because all match long, things were just not going Forge's way. You don't want to drop three points, especially against your rival on the road. The crowd was feeling it. They're all over Forge. You know, Becker's getting booed. Uh, you know, Calvary fans, they're, 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 they're anti-Hamilton chants. And you just, as a Forge fan, as a supporter, you're watching, you're listening, and you're going, oh, I do not want to drop three points to these guys. And Forge did not. And now... Forge have put themselves in a position where they head home next weekend uh, with a big matchup against Pacific with first place on the line with a win next week. They will be in sole possession of first place on the CPL table. How did we get to this point? Um, This match against Calvary, it lived up to its billing, right? We usually, we expect a little bit of fireworks, a little bit of extracurricular. Uh, These two teams do not like each other. These two fan bases do not like each other. And this is the Calvary Forge match we all expected. Let's go back to the start. Forge coming out. Taryn Campbell, Wubens Pasias, and David Schwanier up top in their classic 4-3-3 formation. Becker, Ashton Yodianson, and Sissoko in the midfield with Ashton Morgan. Uh, Garvin Matusala. Mandrakar James and Rezard Rama on the back line with Tristan Henry in goal on the flip side. Forge, by the way, wearing their um, alternate unis again. It's back-to-back weeks, the black and gray. And uh, Calvary came out in the reds playing a 4-2-3-1 defensive formation. Bevan up top with Escalante, Camargo and Busey playing the midfield. Uh, Cobza and Daly playing those two holding midfield positions. And listen, Calgary, uh, uh, they started this match a little bit passive, right? We, we've seen different versions of Calvary against Forge. We've seen a front foot version of Calvary where they try to beat Forge at their own game. Um, we've also seen recently, as of last year's, uh, I guess it was the CPL semifinal, when these two teams played each other. And we saw a more defensive Calvary, a more patient Kind of a a low block, looking for a counter, trying to pounce on mistakes. And we saw more of that in this. Played passive, played that low block. Forge on the attack, overloading the left side. Taryn Campbell would move in. And it was essentially Ashton Morgan coming in and playing um, from fullback to winger. And the overload on the left side was evident from the very start. This is where Forge wanted to attack. Uh, David Chouanier generally playing on the right side, was freed up. He had some space to handle some crosses, and he had some room. But really, most of the plays, most of the triangles came from the left side of that formation. That is where Forge wanted to attack. Early on, also noticeable, Cavalry testing Tristan Henry from distance. Escalante in the eighth minute, a shot basically from half. Uh, you know, you know, we... Um, most of you listening and watching have been to a Forge match. If not, you've probably seen them play. If you're, this is your introduction to Forge FC, um, a front foot club likes to play on the attack, likes to attack in numbers with overloads. And the goalkeeper, Tristan Henry, very much a part of that, plays high up the field. He's very much, uh, you know, essentially playing a sweeper type role as a goalkeeper and uh, Calvary testing him early. Now, these shots from distance, did they come remotely close to going in, absolutely not. Um, they all missed the target by a long shot, but perhaps, perhaps trying to keep Tristan Henry honest. Ninth minute, though, if we if we go back to the three keys to the match for Forge FC, my first key was early urgency. Welp, it did not go Forge's way. The worst possible thing that could have happened in the first ten minutes did. Calvary opened the scoring. Ali Musi. Uh, he got a hold of this one. It was a rocket, but 
from a, a difficult angle. There wasn't much room. It went short side. Not sure if Tristan Henry just maybe wasn't expecting the location of that shot, uh, but it was hit hard enough. And th- by the way, this is this is the thing. If you're going to hit the target, you hit it as hard as you possibly can because even if the keeper gets uh, their hand on it, their foot on it, it's still going to be difficult for that keeper to corral the ball. And in this case, that was it. Tristan Henry got a piece. The shot was too hard. Short side, it snuck past. And first key of the match, kind of out the window. That uh, You can scratch that one off because scoring early would have been huge for Forge. It did not go their way. But this is a club that has proven they can win and get points in different ways. Another test. By the way, Forge's fifth match in 16 days uh, so for the last month, they, they've been playing every three days, essentially. That's a lot, even for a club with this amount of depth, because it's not just about the playing time, right? There's travel. Um, it messes with your training schedule. Very much, Athletes especially, creatures of habit. Not, not an easy stretch for Forge FC, but this was the final match in that busy stretch, and Forge just needed something out of this one. Not a good start, though, with Forge FC going down early. Escalante being Escalante up to his usual tricks, tactics, spent a lot of time on his back. Uh, most of the time with, with very little contact. I I thought, and I, I listen, I'm probably going to get a lot of flack for this. You know, the Canadian Premier League, it's a brand new league. There's an opportunity here. And I know we're in our fifth season. I don't know. I don't listen. I don't know the exact year we can stop saying it's a new league but for all intents and purposes when you look around the world and this look at this sport and how long it's been around and how long a lot of these leagues have been around you know 100 100 plus years yes the what first quarter of the fifth season is still a brand new league as far as i'm concerned there's an there was an opportunity here to do things a little bit different and I know it's not only Escalante. He's the most noticeable. But these antics, these extracurriculars, these, these you know, the simulation, the diving, if you will, you understand the role it plays in the sport. And sometimes you do have to exaggerate certain things to get the call. I mean, there's only one official on the field, essentially, one referee who's making these calls, and, and, and he can only call what he's seeing. And sometimes it's hard to, to take up you know, that much ground. And so you do have to show the foul as the person. And and it's not, we're not picking on soccer here. Hockey, same way, right? A stick goes high, the player snaps their head back. You can blame them. You can call it whatever you want, but you do need the official to see. It's just, it just, it is what it is. If it's going to increase your chances of getting the call, you're going to do it. It doesn't make sense not to do it, right? I mean, you're adapting. It's, it's natural and it gives you an edge, but there has to, there, there's a way right, if you're a league, to go back, review tape, look at which players are doing it the most, and hand out some punishment. Why is that so crazy? Because it's not done anywhere else in in the world. You have a league that is it's still trying to kind of get its foothold in the sports culture in this country, in Canada. And these types of things are looked down upon by a lot of people who are just not soccer fans. And now, you, wow, why do we have to cater to non-soccer fans? You have to try to cater to everybody. This is a growing league. You need as many fans as possible. This stuff is a bad look. It's just a reality. And I know, I know I'm going to hear it, right? Especially from the purists who first are going to be angry because I said soccer instead of football. I mean, but that that's that's part of what I'm talking about. Um, it's an, You have to drop that. You have to drop that high horse stuff, that 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 holier than now stuff, because you're trying to grow a sport in a country that sees these things, right? These the the, the simulation, the stuff from Escalante, and it ruins it for them. It gives them a, a bad, it leaves a bad taste in their mouth. They maybe they don't want to watch it again after. I'm just saying, there's an opportunity here as a league that's fairly new. You can maybe even lead by example, set a precedent here. Go back, review tape. If you see certain players taking advantage of these situations, hand out some punishment, maybe a warning. 
I don't know, a retroactive card. I don't know what the solution is. Um, and it might sound crazy to some, but listen, I think it'll go a long way. That's just me. Back to the action now. Rant over. Um, but uh, believe me, there are going to be more. If you were not looking to um, hear any complaining, um, that you're you're listening to the wrong broadcast. I'm just going to give you a heads up. Now, Calvary said they played a little back. They played a little less aggressive. That low block. They did appear to get a little more aggressive in their defending as the match went on. All of a sudden, a little more pressure. A little more of a high press. Forcing Forge into a lot of mistakes. And in that first half, there were a lot of mistakes. I mean, there are some halftime stats here that you're not even going to believe that that they came from Forge FC. A little uncharacteristic. But that's what an early goal against can do to you. Becker, as I mentioned, I just made a note. He was hearing it from the crowd, as he usually does. Um which is why the ending of this match is a little extra sweeter for Forge FC. Um, but yeah, it was a sloppy first, I mean, first half for the most part. There were some moments, some glimpses from Forge, but all in all, a little sloppy, a lot of giveaways, just wasn't clean. Um, and Calvary was feeling great. They were feeling confident. They were playing confident. They were organized. They were defending well. Uh, Forge didn't get a ton in that first half. Ali Musi. I know he scored, but even outside of that, very noticeable. So I do want to point this out as well. 43rd minute, Abu Bakar Sissoko. Um, if you did not see this match, he went down after a challenge from Chima, who got a yellow card. This could have and probably should have been a straight red. Go back and watch it. Watch this tackle. Cleats up, barely touches the ball, just cleats up direct contact with Sissoko, who uh, who goes down and he's feeling it. And of course he is. Yellow card handed out by Chima probably should have been a red. I mean, when you are, forget reckless. Again, studs up with both feet. And when you're, you're, you're the right foot, driven into the side of Sissoko's leg with very minimal contact on the ball. Um, it's pretty clear. It's pre- uh, It was clear to me anyway. And then there was a moment too. Again, let's just continue the, 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 the theme of complaining here. 45th minute. So we're heading into, into, um, into halftime here. Mandrakar James takes a shot just outside the box. It's blocked by Kabza. After James makes the shot, you know, Cabza comes in and try and blocks it. So as James is kind of planting his foot down after the shot, he puts his hands on Cabza's back. Cabza goes down, grabs the back of his head. Forge still has possession. Not only do they have possession, they have possession inside Calvary's box. Referee blows the whistle because that's the rule. Head injury. Here's the problem. A, there was no contact with Cobbs's head. So are we now saying that anyone who grabs their head is going to get an automatic whistle every time? Because now you're setting a certain precedent. I understand the severity of head injuries. Um, if you've listened to me long enough, you, you've known that I've had a couple. But in this case, think about this. If it is a black and white rule, someone grabs their head, the whistle's blown no matter who has possession. There has to be a safeguard in that, but there isn't because whistle's blown. It stopped. Cavalry gets the ball back, right? They get the drop ball. They give it back to Forge, but they give it back to Forge. They sent it over to Tristan Henry. So now Forge has to play out the back again after they just had possession, a whistle for a head injury. Um, There has to be a safeguard in that. The team that has possession, if there's no foul on the play, the club that has possession has to retain possession after the whistle. It doesn't make any sense. Why are they losing possession? Makes no sense. I understand. Protect injuries. Listen, blow the whistle as soon as someone grabs their head. Fine. But the team in possession should should keep possession where they had the ball if there's no foul on the play. In this case, there wasn't. Anyways, I think that's the end of my complaining because that was essentially the first. Oh, and then I'm not done yet. I lied. Kabza 
is allowed to re-enter the game immediately after. So here's the other thing. If it's a head injury, why are they allowed to re-enter play immediately after you just stop the play for them when the other team had possession? You understand what I'm saying here? There need to be some some safeguards here so that you cannot abuse the rule. That's all I'm saying. We go into halftime. Calvary has a lead. I'm clearly fired up watching because my my whole my my notes. I mean, three quarters of them are just complaints. Um, and maybe I'm feeling the effects of the the rivalry between these clubs. I don't know. But we go into halftime. Calvary forge shot attempts uh, six five in Forge's favor. Shots on target, 1-1. One, one. Again, Forge FC, just not enough. Just not enough. Getting in those high danger areas, but just um, not, enough, not enough attempts. Uh, possession, 54% in favor of Forge. This is the stat that was, I mean, if, if any stat went against the norms for these two clubs, it's this. Pass accuracy, 82% for Calvary, fine. For Forge, 77 percent this is one of the most accurate passing teams in the league last match against york i believe they were up around 88 percent 77 percent at halftime that speaks to just how just it, it, it wasn't clean it just was not clean from forge and that early goal from calvary i think is the reason it just can it just changes the complexity of the game fortunately there is a halftime and this is your opportunity to go in regroup, retool, whatever you need to do for Forge FC and Bobby Smear and uh, Forge did it because this was a different club in the second half. And my thought going into the end of half was this as well. When you look at the shots on target, it was 1-1. Um, Wubens Pasias, who's playing as the striker in this match, um, you know, he barely touched the ball. And that's not a knock on him. He's He's doing what he needs to do. He just, he, he didn't get the, the, is it the delivery? I don't know. You need your strikers to touch the ball. You need them more engaged. You need them to get a feel for the game. Now, was he so incredibly marked that he just wasn't open? I don't know. Maybe. I mean, I didn't look at him specifically that closely throughout the match. Cause you know, I'm watching it at the match as a whole, not necessarily individual players. You'd have to go back and take a look, but yeah, you can't, you can't have your striker just, not even visible because he, he he just isn't touching the ball. He hasn't been given any opportunities. So Forge, like I said, much better in this one. High danger. Carducci forced to make a couple of very key saves. Um, and by the way, that's another element to this rivalry as well. You have Carducci on one side. You have Tristan Henry on the other. The two best goalkeepers in CPL history going head to head. And... Um, you Carducci did what what you would expect the same way the same thing we've been used to from Tristan Henry we got from Carducci no surprise there made some big saves in that second half time for some changes where we go back to our three keys every game this match that Forge has played they've used all five subs this one no different um, another key by the way was energy efficient Playing control, play with possession, make Calvary chase and defend, and it just didn't turn out that way because of that early goal from Calvary. It just it 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 was uh it it really was it kind of set the pace for the remainder of this match. But Forge did deep dig deep into their uh, well not deep they dug into their substitute pool. Borges comes in for Taryn Campbell. Dominic Samuel comes in for Garvin Matusala. A few minutes later. Jordan Hamilton enters the match. Keep that, keep that mind, keep that in mind. Uh, he takes, he replaces Pasias. Noah Jensen comes in, takes out Sissoko, who uh, Sissoko was, I mean, up and down again. Uh, we've said this before, but in terms of a box to box midfielder with just stamina and pace and and work rate to burn, I don't know that there's another midfielder that plays the same ki- kind. I don't know how Sissoko does it. Um, I mean, that energy that he brings, it's just, it's nonstop. So J- Soko, well-deserved break. Jensen comes in. 81st minute. This this kind of foreshadowed what we were going to see because Forge is threatening here. Mandrakar James, the center back. From inside the area, a bicycle kick. And, and he made contact. The ball, though, 
goes off the left post. You, you, something was building here, and Forge were they were getting their chances. Notably, Alex Ashenyodi Janssen, who played the entire ninety plus, uh, he was booked for the yellow card. That is noteworthy because, as Adam Jenkins pointed out during the broadcast, the uh, play by play man for one soccer and the Canadian Premier League. Um, he may, he pointed this out, so I went back and looked. So Ashton Yodianson, we know he's surpassed that 100 match mark with Forge FC. In all competitions, he's played 127 matches for Forge. That was only the fifth time he had been booked in league play. All five of those bookings, three of them against Cavalry, two against Pacific. Interesting. When you think when you think of Ashton Yodianson, you think of cool, calm, collected, poised. The five times he's been booked has been against their two two of their biggest rivals. Problem? No, I'm going to say definitively, their Forge's two biggest rivals, Calvary Pacific, cannot be a coincidence. Finally, then, ninety fourth minute, Kyle Becker doing what he does, the perfect delivery as most of his deliveries are, absolutely on the money. A lot of black and gray jerseys inside the area. But it was Jordan Hamilton. Clinical. If you watch this goal, it, it's it's not much. He stuck a leg out, got a piece. That's still clinical. It's subtle, but that is what a goal score, that is what a striker does he knew exactly what he needed to do in that moment to for that gold for the ball to find the back of the net now you can even argue that it it may i mean it was headed toward goal uh but he was able to change direction just by getting a leg on it and this is why you need your strikers to get a feel for the ball because all they need all they need sometimes is to get their foot on the ball once for it to result in a goal and in this case, Jordan Hamilton comes in. Oh, what, the 69th minute? Played 20 plus minutes in this one. And he capitalized and picked up, as Forge picked up, a huge, huge point. They really needed that heading into their match against Pacific next weekend. Now, the way this match ended, we'll go through the final stats here. Um, expected goals. Really not a ton in, in terms of just high danger opportunities on target. Um, not much. Forge FC expected goals, 0. 0.79. Expected goals for Cavalry, 0. 0.62. Ball possession, Forge kind of took over in the second half. 59% for the game for Forge. Shot attempts, 15 to 9 for Forge. Shots on target, 5-1 for Forge FC. And um, we look at the attacks and the dangerous attacks. Uh, I mean, dangerous attacks are all that really matter here. 59 for Forge, 30 for Calvary. So Forge did double them in the end. Looking at the table now, and it's worth point. Calvary this season, they, they've opened the scoring in every single match they've played except one. And have not had much to show for it. They're sitting in fourth place right now with nine points, but they're now seven back of Forge FC. They have not been able to maintain leads um, against Forge earlier this season. They went up one nothing. They were up two one. Forge ended up taking a point out of those matchups, out of that matchup. And this one, same thing. Calvary scores first. Forge equalizes. They salvage a point, and it was so sweet for Kyle Becker to play a huge role in this after. You know, he's public enemy number one when he goes into Calgary. And you can see the look on his face. He just, when that final whistle went, you saw the, you saw how just relieved Becker was um, to, to help his club salvage a final point here. Forge FC now still in first place of so the CPL table. They have 16 points in nine matches. Pacific with 15 points in eight um, yes, there's a match in hand for Pacific, but that won't matter going into next weekend because regardless of what Pacific does with that match, if Forge can secure 
three points, um, that's a, that's a four point cushion and that game in hand will not matter. All right. What a game. If you have one soccer, um, if you don't, you should, or Fubo TV, however you get access to your one soccer and, uh, you're going to want to go back and check this one out. It was a good one. Classic Calvary and forge forge being able to, uh, leave Calgary with a point. Now they head home. You're going to want to be there, by the way, on Saturday. What a stretch for Forge FC. They play their, they played York, right? Their geographical rival. They played Calvary, their, their arch nemesis. And then they play Pacific. Their, I don't know what to name them, but if they're not Forge's biggest rival there, they're probably their second behind Calvary. But either way, huge rivalry match next weekend. 7 o'clock at Tim Hortons Field, forgefc.ca slash tickets to be there live. Okay, speaking of live, this was our live broadcast, our match in review. When you hear that final whistle, however you get your Forge content, if it's on YouTube, it's on social media, if it's Facebook, Twitter, log on, go to the official Forge channel, and you will see me live in person giving you your match. It's instant. It could The reaction could not be more instant. It's literally after the final whistle. Hope you enjoyed. We're going to talk to you very This very has soon. been Match in Review with Anthony Arcioli on the Forge Audio Network. For the latest on all things Forge FC, subscribe on Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts.